this morning, you'd open them. I have a simple word. You ain't heard nothing yet. Luke chapter 8, beginning at verse 40. Luke, New Testament Gospel, Luke chapter 8, beginning at verse 40. We stand in honor of the reading of God's Word. The King James text reads in this fashion. And it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him, for they were all waiting for him. And behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue, and he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come into his house. For he had one only daughter, about twelve years of age, and she lay a-dying. But as he went, the people thronged him, and a woman having an issue of blood twelve years, which has spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any, came behind him and touched the border of his garment, and immediately her issue of blood stanched. And Jesus said, Who touched me? When all denied, Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude throng thee and press thee, and sayest thou who touched me? And Jesus said, Somebody hath touched me, for I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. And he said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. While he yet spake, there cometh one from the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying to him, Thy daughter is dead, trouble not the master. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him, saying, Fear not, believe only, and she shall be made whole. And when he came into the house, he suffered no man to go in, save Peter, James, and John, and the father and the mother of the maiden. And all wept and bewailed her. But he said, Weep not, she is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn, knowing that she was dead. And he put them all out and took her by the hand and called, saying, Maid, arise. And her spirit came again, and she arose straightway. And he commanded to give her meat, and her parents were astonished. But he charged them that they should tell no man what was done as if they'd have to. Amen. A miracle like that happens. You know, God tell nobody. Obviously, he's going to get around. Just, you know, the minute that girl walks out, everybody thought they knew she was dead. But, you know, it's interesting. The message title this morning is simply, You Ain't Heard Nothing Yet. Because Jairus had come to get Jesus. The Lord was distracted by this woman with an issue of blood. And in the process of all that, the little girl died, and here came Jairus' servant from the synagogue and said, Hey, don't trouble the master any further. Your daughter's died. But the Lord said, Hey, listen to me. I realize you've just heard from a reliable source, your servant, but listen to me. Because I'm telling you that if you'll just believe, she'll be all right. Amen. You ain't heard nothing yet. Master, in the name of Jesus, we're asking God for the anointing this morning. To rest upon your sermon, God, help us to deliver this word of exhortation as you placed it in my heart. Help it to lift people up today, God. Help it to inspire faith in the heart of every hearer. Let us all be encouraged to believe you in a greater way. Let our faith today be lifted to new heights, God. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Praise God and amen. You may be seated today. So many in our world today trust the word of man without giving primary consideration first to the Word of God. What God has to say about our present situation is far more important than what the preacher may have to say. It's way more important rather than what the doctor might have to say. It's a lot more important than what the scientists may tell you. And it certainly has a lot more import than what our parents even might have told us or taught us growing up. We only tend to incline our ears to those 
whose word we consider trustworthy and or immutable. You ever notice that? You don't just, you know, some people come in and they're talking a bunch of foolishness. We had somebody visit us in a service recently. And this fellow was just, oh, Lord, he was just full of all kind of stuff. And he was talking all kinds of stuff. Now, half of what he said, you and I both know, went in one ear and out the other because we really didn't look upon him as a reliable source. But when you have someone like Mary does this morning, lying in a hospital bed, suffering and dying, and the doctor comes out and tells you something, you tend to take what the doctor says as being pretty serious and pretty important and pretty trustworthy, don't you? Because you consider a doctor to be somebody you trust. But you know what? I don't care what the doctors say. You ain't heard nothing yet. If God hadn't spoken, then the final word hasn't been spoken. Amen. If God hadn't spoken yet, then, honey, you ain't heard nothing yet. I don't care what the doctors say. I don't care what the attorneys say. I don't care what the scientists say. I don't care what your parents have said. I don't care what the preacher or a pope or a prophet or a priest has said. If God has not yet spoken, then, children, you haven't heard nothing yet. Glory to God. And when we learn to train ourselves to listen for God and to wait for God and ignore all the other sounds that we hear until we hear from heaven, then we'll find a place of faith and strength that we can rely upon. Whew. The Lord wants us to learn that when the servant comes like he did to Jairus and say, hey, your daughter's dead. The Lord wants us to learn. That's not the final word. I haven't spoken yet. <laughs> you haven't asked me what condition she's in and how things are going to go. But when God speaks, sometimes God speaks contrary to everything that would seem natural, everything that would seem plausible, everything that would seem possible. But don't you know that God is the God of the impossible? God is the God of the implausible. God is the God of the supernatural. He's able to do what no man can do. That's why he can say something that contradicts what the doctors say, because God's able to do different than the doctor is able to do. That's why he's able to say different than what the attorney or the lawyer or the judge says, because God is able to do differently than they are. My Lord, have mercy. That's why today there are people that are terrified to go into a church and they feel like that God wants no part of them and God wants to have nothing to do with them and because they've heard preachers say this and they've heard preachers say that and preachers have condemned them and preachers have ridiculed them and preachers have spoken evil of them but my word to you today children is this you ain't heard nothing yet if you haven't heard from God if all you've heard is the preacher then you haven't heard nothing yet because God still has yet to speak to you and until you hear from heaven, don't you rely upon anything that you, any word you receive in this journey we call life. Amen? I don't care what you hear or where it comes from. Until you hear it from God's lips, don't you believe it. We wait impatiently for the doctor to emerge from the sick room to share with us the definitive word on the condition of our loved ones. But the doctor can only speak of that which he knows. And his knowledge is limited. He may be educated up the yin-yang, but his knowledge is still limited. Amen. God speaks from an entirely different perspective. Where the impossible is possible and the miraculous is commonplace. Hallelujah. When we look uh, at the words of Jesus in John chapter 8, beginning of verse 21, then said Jesus again unto them, I go my way, and ye shall seek me, and shall die in your sins. Whither I go, ye cannot come. Then said the Jews, Will he kill himself? Because he saith, Whither I go, ye cannot come. And he said unto them, Ye are from beneath, I am from above. See, God's perspective is different than our perspective. He said, ye are from beneath, I am from above. Ye are of this world, I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe that I am 
He. Did you hear that? He said, if you believe that I am, if you, uh, if you believe not that I am he, I am he who. Obviously, he figured they knew who he was talking about, Tommy. Now, who do you guess he was talking? Who do you suppose he was suggesting that he was? If you don't believe that I am he, that I am God. What's going to happen if you don't believe that? Ye shall die in your sins. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? <laughs> and Jesus saith unto them, Even the same that I said unto you from the beginning, I have many things to say and to judge of you, but he that sent me is true, and I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. They understood not that he spake to them of the Father. Then said Jesus unto them, When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself. But as my Father hath taught me, I speak these things, and he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. Sometimes hearing the Lord speak from his perspective, it sounds quite odd because it doesn't quite fall into the same realm as we exist in. Amen? Sometimes when God speaks, I'll tell you, I've had experiences where uh, people have been told by the doctor that they're going to die. They've got a few weeks to live. I remember one preacher friend of mine up in Connecticut when I was pastoring in the Church of God, a black man, and they told him that he had, uh, what do they call that, Lymph lymphomic cancer, all through the lymph nodes, it was all through his body, they said it was everywhere. said, brother, you know, you've got all of maybe six weeks to live. And my state overseer said, I don't accept that. We ain't heard nothing yet. <laughs> We hadn't heard from the great physician. We haven't heard from heaven. We haven't heard from the throne room of God. We've heard from the doctor, but we haven't heard from God. I don't accept that. And he called the day of prayer and fasting. And we all gathered together at this man's church. He had a beautiful, great big church in Hartford, Connecticut. And all the preachers and members that were available to be there fasted for the entire day. And we gathered at that meeting and began to pray and seek God on that man's behalf and pray for his healing. And we prayed and we prayed and we prayed until finally, finally, a word came from heaven and a prophetic word came forth and said, You're going to be all right. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what the doctors told you. I'm telling you, you're going to be all right. And I want to tell you today, that man lived to be an old man. He did. He lived to be an old man and passed away with old age and not with cancer in his lymph nodes. So, children, I'm here to tell you, if you have faith, if you learn to trust God and believe God, if you learn that this Christianity I'm talking about, good old-fashioned, one God, Jesus' name, apostolic, Acts 2.38, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized, Christianity, when you get that down in your soul, I'm here to tell you, you will learn that when the highest authority on planet Earth comes and tells you something, you will learn to know that there is still yet a word to be heard. Because you ain't heard nothing yet. I don't care if George Bush gets up on television and announces it and says it so. Because, honey, president or no president, I ain't heard nothing yet. Until God speaks, it hadn't been spoken. Until God speaks, it hasn't been said. My Lord, have mercy. I was tickled last night, but not in a good way, but it was just kind of interesting. I told folks about three weeks ago in church here, the Spirit of the Lord showed me. Now, y'all remember last year I had a prophetic message, and I told you some things, and it happened. We had exactly what I said happen, happen. I talked about the fact that God had spoken to me that we were going to have a, a uh, record year 
when it came to storms and hurricanes. And lo and behold, that's exactly what happened. We had not not just a phenomenal year. We had a record-shattering year when it came. And I remember seeing on TV late in the year as the, the announcers were saying that uh, 2005 was a record-breaking year. said, man, we shattered records. There were more hurricanes in 2005 than in any year in history, in human recorded history. There were more hurricanes in 2005, and that's exactly what I talked about doing it a year before. And then turn around, and this year I've told you the Spirit of the Lord has spoken to me and warned me that there is going to be a, an immense amount of water coming. There is a lot of water coming. Be prepared because there's a lot of water coming. I can, every time I turn around, God is just showing me water and water and water and rain and water and storms and water. Anything that can push or uh, bring water is going to come. And there are two states that I saw very heavily affected, one of which is Texas and the other of uh, California. Well, lo and behold, last night, Late at night, I'm watching the Weather Channel, and all of a sudden, they're showing that this enormous storm system that looked like Hurricane Rita, or Hurricane Katrina, I should say, big, gigantic storm system, had come from the Pacific and had come up against California, and it had California flooded all the way up to Washington State. I said, there's the beginning. It's starting I told you all it's going to happen. I told you it's coming. It's coming. You watch. said in the next two years, it's not going to be a one-year thing. This is going to be a two-year thing. We're going to see a lot of water over the next couple of years in this state and in, Texas and in California and on the West Coast. But you see, when God speaks, you can count on it. But if God hadn't spoken, then it hadn't been said. Amen? In 2 Corinthians chapter 4, I'm not going to read the whole story this morning. There is the story of a woman... 2 Kings chapter 4, there's a story of a woman who was not able apparently to have children and the prophet Elijah came along and he was able to beseech the Lord on her behalf and she was able to have a child and she gave birth to a son and as the boy got older he had gone out with his dad into the field to work. And all of a sudden, he, he began to complain of a headache and fell to the ground, and they dragged him to the house, and he died. And she got hold of one of her servants, and she said, You're faster than I am. Let's go find the man of God. Let's go find the same man who is able to beseech the Lord on my behalf so that I could have a child when I couldn't have a child. Let's go find the man of God. She said, you go ahead of me because you're faster than I am. I want to get hold of him as fast as I can. And the servant said, but what do I say to him when I get there? And she said, you tell him, all is well. Hallelujah. Everything's fine. Glory to God. Everything's good. Well, why in the world would I tell him that? You just tell him that. He'll know if he sees you. He knows you come from my house. If he sees you running to need him, he'll know something's up, but you just tell him everything's all right. Why would I tell him everything's all right? Because I haven't heard from God yet. Hallelujah. I know what the doctors say. I know what my husband says, but I haven't heard from God yet. And until I hear from God, everything's all right. All children, if we could train ourselves in our lives to trust God enough to know that until I hear from heaven, everything's all right. Doesn't matter what my circumstance is. Doesn't matter what my situation is. Everything's okay. We tend to get down mouth, you know. As human beings, we immediately turn to the negative and get down mouth and negative and faithless. But if God hadn't spoken, then everything's going to be all right. Because until God says it's over, it ain't over. Amen. You ain't heard nothing yet. And the story goes that as the woman finally reaches the man of God, and the man of God immediately begins to ask her, it reminds me of a time I was pastoring in my first church in Leo. Raskowski called me at late at night, about 11 o'clock at night. I was already dressed for bed, and I was already, matter of fact, I think I was already in bed. And he said, Brother Morrow, could you come down to the house? 
would you mind coming down to the house? I said, well, Leo, why? Is everything all right? Yeah, it's all right. I said, well, is Sue okay? That's his wife. And he said, yeah, Sue's all right. I said, are the babies okay? Are the kids okay? He said, yeah, the babies are okay. You see, when you see when somebody's asking for help, you know, when somebody comes to you for help, you tend to start trying to figure out what the problem is as quick as you can. So I begin to go through, and this is exactly what the man of God did in Second Kings, as this woman began to approach him. He began to ask the question, "Is everything okay with you?" And she says, "Yes, everything's all right." Is everything all right with your husband? She says, "Yes, everything's all right." Is everything with, all right with your child? And she said, yes, everything's all right. Because I haven't heard from God yet. And until God says it's over, it ain't over. So, so far as I'm concerned, this situation is not done. As so far as I'm concerned, this situation is not finished. We have not reached the conclusion to this particular situation. How many circumstances come into our lives and we act like we've reached a conclusion long before God has even spoken? My Lord, have mercy. I remember when my little cousin Donald was just a little boy and he developed cancer behind the eye on his brain, between his eye and his brain. And the doctors were saying, we're going to have to take out the whole eye. We're going to have to take out the whole thing, blah, blah, blah. And I came home from school. I'll never forget it. Vivid memory of this. And my mom was down in our washroom at 378 Burton Road, Beacon Falls, Connecticut. She was down in the laundry room doing laundry. And I had just come home from school. And I went in, and she was kind of upset. And I said, what's wrong? She said, well, it's Donald. You know, you remember he had that sty in his eye, and they were worried about that. So, well, they found out he's got cancer. He's got a tumor behind his eye. And they want to take out the whole thing and blah, blah, blah. And I remember, just as sure as I'm alive, saying to my mother that day, and I say it today, God's still on the throne. Amen. We hadn't heard from heaven yet. We just heard from the doctor. But we haven't heard from heaven yet. God hadn't spoken yet. And it was just a few weeks that Donald began to go through chemotherapy and all that stuff. And one Sunday in our children's church, I called Don Boy down because I was our children's church director at the time. And I called Don Boy down. I said, we're going to pray for you and anoint you with all and pray for you. And we did. And he was going in for some preliminary follow-up testing to get ready for the surgery. And when he did go in for that uh for those tests and what have you, to line everything up, they couldn't find a thing. They couldn't find the tumor. They couldn't find any sign of it. It wasn't there. You know why? Because until you hear from God, you ain't heard nothing yet. Do you hear what I'm telling you today? God's a big God. You know, I'm going to tell you today, listen to me carefully. If the Lord is not speaking, we shouldn't be listening. Do you hear what I'm telling you? If the Lord isn't speaking, we should not be listening. It's one thing to hear, it's another thing to listen. The Bible says, let him that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. We ought to be uh, sitting there and hearing the doctor, but listening to God. Do you hear what I'm telling you? When you're in legal trouble, you should be listening to the uh, or hearing, I should say, the attorney or the judge, but you should be listening to God. You should be hearing the voices of man around you, but you should be listening for the voice of God, because until God has spoken, nothing that is worthwhile has even been said. And just because the one who claims, uh, who is doing the speaking, claims to be a spokesman for God Almighty, it doesn't mean that he or she is indeed speaking for or on behalf of the Lord. Some preachers get up and say, you can't be saved because of who you are. Well, I don't care, preacher. You seem to think because of who you are that I'm supposed to take your word over it, and I'm not supposed to be listening for the voice of the Spirit just so God can tell me what God has to tell me. Well, I got news for you. God is preaching a different message to me than you're preaching to me, Rod Parsley. God is preaching a different message to me than you're preaching to me, Jerry Falwell. God is preaching a different message to me than you're preaching to me, Pat Robertson. And you know what? That tells me two things. That tells me, number one, yes, I can be saved. Yes, I can serve God. Yes, I can be who I am. But it also tells me that you're not in line with God. Because why is he telling me one thing and you're telling me something different? My Lord.
Lord have mercy. Whew. In closing tonight, Deuteronomy 18, or this morning, Deuteronomy 18, verses 15 through 22, The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren like unto me, unto him ye shall hearken. This is a prophetic word relative to the Messiah. According to all that thou desirest of the Lord thy God, in Horeb, in the day of the assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see his great fire any more, that I die not. And the Lord said unto me, They have well spoken that which they have spoken. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. God don't take lightly when you claim to represent him and tell fibs. The Lord don't take lightly to folks who claim to represent him and go out there and tell a bunch of garbage and tell a bunch of lies. You know, I've known a lot of great holiness people in my life. I've, I, I admire them. I appreciate them. I, I think they're wonderful people. But you know what? I don't think that woman's uncut hair made her a wonderful, lovely person. I think she'd have been a wonderful, lovely person if she'd have cut her head bald and painted her face like Jezebel. She'd still have been a wonderful, lovely person. She'd have just looked different. Amen. But, you know, there's so many people today who just, we, we want to take things at face value. We want to believe that what, what we see is what we get, and that isn't always the case. So many people look at these TV preachers, and, you know, these TV preachers crack me up, brother, because all you ever see of them is what's videotaped. You don't see their life. You don't know how they live their life. You don't know what they live like. Jimmy Swagger proved that point for us when he decided to go out on a little hooker hiring binge, you know, and it finally come out in the press and everybody read it. And I'm not even condemning the man or criticizing the man. Do I believe that that, that kind of conduct is right? No. But the point is I'm not going to criticize or condemn him. We're all human. We're all flesh and blood. I'm not, so I'm not trying to come down on the man. But the point is he proved the point. He proved a simple point. We don't always know what these people are doing when the cameras are turned off. Why in the world, then, will we assume just because they get enormous coverage and just because they're so popular and they're, they're so prolific and you see them every time you turn on your TV, why then would you be foolish enough to assume that what comes out of their mouth is from God's lips to your ear? Amen. But we do that. But God does not take lightly to those who claim things. Uh, they claim to be speaking in the name of the Lord, and they're, they're saying lies and telling untruths. He said, those that do this, he said, those prophets shall die. He said, and if thou say in thine heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord hath not spoken? When the prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord... If the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken. But the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously. Thou shalt not be afraid of him. The Lord said, if the prophet says it and it don't happen, then you don't have nothing to be afraid of, because that guy's full of baloney. It's that easy. It's that simple. But you know what, brother? When the preacher gets up in the pulpit and tells gay and lesbian people, and tells the entire uh, population of this planet, you can know God, you can come to God as you are, and he will fill you with the Holy Ghost, and he will give you this good old time religion, and he'll give you this good old apostolic salvation. You know what? When they come to the altar, and they wind up praying through to the Holy Ghost, and you see those very people getting what that preacher's saying, then something's got to be right, because God said if they're a false prophet, it wouldn't be happening. Am I telling the truth? 
I've been in enough meetings and seen the altars filled with GLBT people and folk getting the Holy Ghost and God healing people and the Lord touching people. So something tell me we got to be more right in our message and we're wrong. Hello now. Because God doesn't honor the word of a liar. Amen. God does not honor the word of a liar. I want to tell you today, I, this was just a very simple word of exhortation. We got a great message for tonight, similar in some ways to this message, a little slightly different take on it, but I think between the two, you, you'll be encouraged to listen for God. Don't take the word of a prophet, priest, pope, or preacher. Listen for the Lord. Listen for the voice of God and wait because you ain't heard nothing yet. Jairus could have easily turned and gone home defeated because his daughter was now dead at the word of his servant. But rather than take the word of his servant, Jairus took the word of his master, who said, Jairus, let's go. It'll be all right. Amen. Tommy, I always want to take God's word over any word I ever hear, whether it be the doctor, whether it be the the, the Pope, whether it be a judge or whoever it be. I always want to take God's word over. And Mother, you know, as I was listening last night to Mary talking about her 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 uh, brother, and she told me something about uh, all that was going on and all that, I said to her that you haven't heard from God yet. Yeah, you've heard from the doctors, <laughs> but you haven't heard from God yet. See, Tommy, it ain't time to get worried till you hear from heaven. Amen. You don't have to get, it ain't time to get upset till you hear from heaven. And then if you hear from heaven, now you listen to me. I remember a UPC preacher years ago that I sat under for about a year or better, my brother Davis over here in East Texas. His son was only about 23 years old, and his son died. And the Lord showed me some things about that whole situation because it happened before I met him, before I ever went to his church. And Brother Davis was in the habit of preaching as though God had stolen his son away from him and just took him away and, and, and how upset he was that he lost his son. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said, that's a lie. I said, huh? The Lord said, I went to Davis. I'll never forget it because he said it that way. He said, I went to David and asked him, can I take your son? Do you understand that this would be in his best interests right now, in his life, for uh, reasons I won't go into right now, but a lot of reasons. The Lord showed me every ounce of it, and I wrote a letter to Brother Davis and People who read that letter, including another minister friend of mine in the UPC, were shocked. They said, Brother Morrow, there's no way you can know all these details. I said, well, of course there is a way. It's called the Holy Ghost. But the Lord was trying to put that preacher in check. Because you don't bring accusation against God falsely. You don't do that. It's not very wise. But you see, when God speaks to you, sometimes there's a peace. But sometimes, most of the time, there's a peace that comes with that knowledge. So that, for instance, I said to Mary, well, you haven't heard from heaven yet. But if the Lord were to speak to Mary and say, Mary, I want him to come home now. It's time for him to come home now. You know what? It would be a whole lot easier for Mary to let him go. It would be a whole lot easier for Mary to just let him go on and let him go to his reward. Do you see what I'm saying? Because you've heard from heaven. And when you hear from heaven, there's something that happens. So sometimes, even though what we hear from heaven may not be what we want to hear, the fact of the business is there's, there's something that comes with hearing from God on a matter. We'll either receive that peace or that assurance or that calmness that the Holy Ghost brings because we've heard from the Lord. Or she might hear from heaven and the voice of the Lord will say, everything's going to be fine. Everything's going to be okay. But regardless of what God has to say, we just need to learn that no matter who comes to us and what they say, you ain't heard nothing yet till you've heard from God. Amen? Would you stand with me this morning? Amen. Master, we love you today. We thank you, God, for this service. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We're grateful, God, for this encouragement. 
And we need to trust you and lean on you and listen for the voice of God from heaven to speak in every circumstance, in every situation. For God, until we've heard from you, we haven't heard anything yet. Master, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for the presence of your Spirit in this place today, for the Spirit of encouragement and the Spirit of faith that inspires us, God, to believe you for great, miraculous, and supernatural things. God, today, as we leave this place, one more time, we just want to lift up Mary's brother. God, you're able this hour, as he lies in surgery, to perform miraculous things in that man's body. God, confound the doctors today, we pray. Do that which they would consider impossible. Master, in the name of Jesus, we lift him up, God, in faith, believing you, trusting you, agreeing together as one body on his behalf. Master, in the name of Jesus, go with us from this place till we come back this evening once again to be in your presence. Let our fellowship and time together glorify you in all that's said and done, for we ask it in Jesus' precious name. Amen. God bless you this morning, and amen.